Why does my modem keep restarting? This is a nightmare. I bought my own modem thinking I would be saving money, but now it keeps restarting and this stinks. Welcome to Extra Techie where we learn to tech and use tech to learn. In this video, we're going to be exploring a possible solution to your internet problems, but you may need to get down and dirty to fix it. Don't forget to smash the like button and lightly tap the subscribe button so you don't upset the YouTube lords. So you own your own modem, or at least you're getting into the idea of owning your own modem. And for that video, make sure you click up here. So what could possibly go wrong with owning a modem? Well, for one, it's when the internet seemingly dies and kills off any chance of surfing or streaming anything while the outage has happened. Since install, this Aris SB6190 has disconnected from the internet at least four times with the outages lasting about 10 minutes. Now for me, I can wait it out. But for a family that uses the internet constantly, this was a problem. And since it was my idea to go with the non-rented modem, I've got to find a solution. Where do we start? First, I went to Aris's community forums and searched the model of my modem and no internet or lost connection or a combination of that idea and started perusing the discourse. And after several days of hunting and gathering and searching, I was able to find enough information on Reddit forums, on Aris forums, a lucky TikTok video that leads me to the suspicion of a problem that may exist in the wiring of your house. Let's break it down. Your modem receives an electrical signal from the internet service provider through the physical cable that runs from the outside of your house to the distribution point on a pole in your neighborhood. This cabling can be easily interfered with through EMI, which produces crosstalk. Essentially, crosstalk affects the signal that is running in your cable and can be diagnosed down to a poor quality cable or non-terminated ends that act as mini antennas that introduce interference within your cabling system. Deep breath, everyone. Let's recap. The modem that you bought, that you're now saving money on, keeps restarting. When it restarts, you lose the internet. The solution may lie in the wiring of your house. Let's explore that. If you are tech savvy, you can log into your modem and capture some statistics about downstream and upstream, but stay away from that if that scares you. Instead, investigate your house to see if you have any coaxial cables acting as antennas, meaning they are connected to nothing, but they are in the same line as your modem. In most households, one coaxial cable enters the house, hits a splitter, and then one line goes to your modem, and three lines go to TV set-top boxes. But if you take the boxes away, you have three antennas creating interference in your coaxial infrastructure. I know, I know. Just get to the fix. Stop talking. It's time to show what you need to do to fix the problem. First, I investigate the D-Mark outside of my house. Yours will vary. I can see that this is the service line and it immediately splits into two cables. One of these lines goes upstairs, but there is no point in having this line, so let's fix this first. Okay, now I have my service line entering the household directly. Let's trace the cable. Here we go, another split point. This time, it splits into two, with one going to a TV that had a set-top box and one going to the modem's location. Let's remove the split. Now, on to where the modem lives. Oh man, looks like another split is involved. 
That's wild. We'll remove the split and create a direct connection from the service line that is outside to the modem. I'm going to reboot the modem to ensure we have a fresh signal. Let's check the stats. The stats I am specifically looking at are the power levels of the up and down streams. For downstream, you want to keep it between the 12s. Before, the power level was averaging 2. After, the power level is closer to 9. Although there was a change, both numbers stayed between the recommended levels. Next, the power level for upstream should be less than 55, as being above will certainly cause issues. Before, the power level of the upstream was 54. After, the power level is closer to 47. That is a positive change, so I feel pretty confident in the work we accomplished today. So now that the solution is in place and we've been running our modem for a few days, did we notice anything? Well, I have not noticed disconnects like I did before, but that could just be circumstance. So we're gonna let this ride out for a full week and report back. Now, although I'm wearing the same clothes, it has been a long time since I've written this script. So I waited for seven days to pass. And what I can say is that we didn't really have any disconnects, but we did run into an interesting problem where I completely disconnected my Xfinity service. And that's another video coming your way because it is a buyer beware video. So stay tuned for that. To summarize, we were wondering what causes modem restarts, and the big issue is upstream and downstream powers from your ISP. By removing those splitters in your house, you are able to create a more direct path from the ISP to the modem without the effects of EMI. And the best part is you should be experiencing a better internet connection from now on. But if you are continuing to see restarts on your modem, you're going to want to pull the logs from the modem so you can pass them on to the manufacturer and start a tech support ticket. As always, if you learned something in today's video, don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel because that's the best way you can support me and the work that I do every once in a while. This is Extra Techie, and you've been watching how to improve your internet connection on a modem that restarts due to possible power levels from the ISP. Don't forget to nerd out, practice, do the best you can, and let's chat next time. We'll see you.